Hello, and thank you for watching this reflection for the third Sunday of Advent. I'm Michael Camp. Our readings today give us a glimpse of one of the great metaphors of the biblical story, that is, the journey, and in particular, the pathway on which the journey takes place. John the Baptist talks about preparing the way for the Lord. More of John in a minute. But first, I want to just reflect a bit on this image of the pathway. It's a powerful image because it's something that we recognise and something that we use in so many different ways. It appears in one form or another in a million stories. Follow the yellow brick road in The Wizard of Oz. In Sleeping Beauty, the handsome prince has to carve a pathway through the undergrowth to reach the enchanted castle. We've used it a good deal in the media recently too. The arrival of the COVID vaccine is said to offer us a way out of the pandemic at last. We can now see the path that will lead us back to the daylight. Can we see a path to a Brexit deal? No, don't go there. After a long period without a trophy, can Spurs finally see a path back to success? Well, hopefully. This image of the pathway to a desired destination has become a fashionable one to use. All these stories are journeys. Can we see the path? The idea of a journey is a powerful one, but even more powerful, perhaps, is the idea of getting lost on a journey and not being able to see the path ahead. Getting lost is one of those elemental fears that lurk deep within us. We need to see the path home. So for all those reasons and more, this metaphor of the pathway resonates through scripture and right into our hearts and minds. So let's come back to our gospel reading. Here we find John the Baptist being questioned by the priests and the Levites. Who are you, they ask? Are you the Messiah? Are you Elijah? No, says John, I am not. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way find the path. For John, this is all about the journey of the whole of humanity, the journey back to God, the journey into the kingdom of God. So we might paraphrase John's message something like this. Here is humanity, lost in a forest of sin and self-centeredness. So let me show you the path ahead. Here is the path out of darkness, the path out of the undergrowth, here is the yellow brick road. But where to? What is the goal of humanity's journey? Where are we trying to get to? Well, for that, we can turn to today's Old Testament reading. It's the passage from Isaiah that Jesus himself quoted in the synagogue at Nazareth. Good news for the oppressed, liberty for captives, binding up broken hearts, gladness instead of mourning, praise instead of a faint spirit building up ancient ruins, love for justice, hatred of wrongdoing, righteousness and praise springing up the year of the Lord's favour. I could go on, but that's not bad, is it? What a conclusion to humanity's journey. And the message of the Gospels, the Christian good news, is that in Jesus, we can see all those things actually happening. Liberty, gladness, justice, righteousness and praise, an end to mourning and wrongdoing and imprisonment. In Jesus, God has brought all those things about. In Jesus, all that has come into the world in concrete human form, and its ultimate victory is assured. No surprise then that we sometimes call today Gaudete Sunday, Rejoicing Sunday. No surprise that we celebrate its arrival at Christmas. Now, that would be a nice place to stop, actually, wouldn't it? Ending a sermon on a note of rejoicing sounds good. But there has to be a bit more, doesn't there? That marvellous vision of the kingdom of God that Isaiah wrote about and that Jesus exemplified cannot yet be said to be the real day-to-day -day experience of people in the world as it is. Mourning and crying and injustice and oppression and imprisonment and wrongdoing are still the daily reality for many, sadly. 
we still await God's final decisive action to make the vision a reality for all. So, in the meantime, our task is still to prepare God's way like John the Baptist did. So how do we do that? Well, of course, we look to Jesus. And we find that there are three things that we must do. The first is to repent. To repent is simply to turn, to change. So that means confessing our sin and accepting our place in working for a new world. Secondly, we are to embrace the good news that God loves and forgives us. That sounds easy and nice, doesn't it? But it can be harder than it seems because so often we don't feel worthy. Well, God's not worried about worthiness. God loves you anyway. Thirdly, we are to pray. We are to pray earnestly for the strength of God's Holy Spirit to enable us to be more Christ-like. Those three steps, repentance, embracing forgiveness and love, and prayer for strength are our yellow brick road. They are humanity's path out of the pandemic of sin and selfishness. And they are what we Christians have to offer to the world. Repentance with celebration of the love of God and prayer for the Holy Spirit. So, if the thought of liberty and justice and comfort and righteousness really do make you rejoice today, then get on that path and make the way to it straight and visible to all.